Hey everyone, hope everyone had a good lunch. Um, we have a really exciting panel. Um, we're going to be talking everything kind of cross-chain. Um, I think, you know, it's pretty obvious now to me that we're living in a multi-chain world, um, which has been great. There's been all these ecosystems popping up across L1s and L2s. Um, but how do all these things connect? And how do the downstream uh, UX, uh, how does that work as well? So we're going to be discussing all of that. Um, but first, um, before we dig into things, it would be great if you guys could just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your project as well. Sure. Hey, everybody. So my name is Chris Hart. I'm the CEO at Civic. Civic has been in the blockchain identity space since 2016. So we're kind of OGs. We've been around for a little while. We've worked with blockchain companies. We've worked with non-blockchain companies. And I actually think this is a really exciting time because what we're hearing from projects, unlike what we had heard previously over the last couple of years, is identity is becoming really, really important, whether that's for DeFi, whether that's for NFTs. It's becoming really essential, and it's something that they need and they want inside their project. So for us, that's really cool because what we've built basically is an identity Lego that you can pull off the shelf, it's fully com composable, it works cross-chain, and in 2018, we launched our sister company, Identity.com, and Identity.com is a nonprofit, and they have something called the Identity Gatekeeper Protocol, and basically, our identity token lives on that Identity Gatekeeper Protocol, and, and we basically provide identity, and I think it's important just to say identity doesn't always mean KYC, it can actually mean other things. It can mean fully anonymous, as in the case of Ignite, which we launched on, on Solana on Monday, which is for NFT mints and drops. It can mean pseudo-anonymous, like we're doing for NFT creators who want to be um, instilling trust in their community, but um, they want to be semi-anonymous. Or it could be full KYC, like Solrise Dex Pro, that awesome team, or um, we've got Snow Crash, which is an NFT platform um, based on Metaplex, launching on Solana. You're going to hear a lot about that project, I think, soon. So we're really fired up about like the cross-chain identity. It needs to be elevated up beyond one chain, but we're doing it all on Solana because it's fast, cheap, and um, the time to finality is really good. So that's us. Hey everyone, I'm Gabe Cohen. I work at 3Box Labs, which builds out a product called the Ceramic Network. And the idea is that we have mutable data on uh, decentralized storage. So you can bring your own blockchain and bring your own decentralized storage, IPFS, Arweave, anything else, and have uh, high integrity data that can change over time. Think about dynamic NFTs or any data that you want to associate with your decentralized app applications. And we're really trying to realize the, the power of decentralized identity, putting users in control of all of their data independent of any centralized institution or even any centralized storage solution or uh, blockchain itself. So free your data on Ceramic. Sure. Hey everyone, I'm Simon Harmgart here. I'm from um, Parsec and IQ Labs. So we've been around since 2019 with Parsec. And, and what Parsec's all about is about uh, access, making it really easy to access data happening on chain in real time. Uh, so it's all about streaming data. So whatever data you want to monitor, Parsec has its own uh, programming language that's super easy to use called Parsec QL. Um, and if you want to monitor a custom event within your smart contract or internal external function calls, we can detect that in real time. And then you can send notifications to users, Telegram, Discord, or alert an endpoint by leveraging webhooks. Or even if you wanted to integrate email, um, you could go ahead and, and send an email again in real time by just detecting that event uh, on chain. So Parsec started off with streaming. And now we're moving again into historical data uh, soon as well. Uh, we're cross-chain ETH, uh, BSC, uh, Solana. We're heavily invested in Solana. We really believe in the future of Solana. Um, so that's all about Parsec. And then um, we launched a new protocol that's called uh, IQ Protocol. And it's all about making it really simple for uh, users to build their tokenomics. And what we noticed is that the incentives of all users aren't always aligned um, in, in protocols. So you're going to have 
users who just want to want to hold the token, uh, might not want to use it for whatever utility it has. But then you're going to have users who actually just want to access the service, not be exposed to the price fluctuations of that native token. So what this protocol allows is to actually rent wrapped expirable versions of that original token from lenders. And everyone wins at the end of the day because um, people who want to access the utility can pay like a monthly fee or an annual fee, like if it's a subscription, um, in order to access whatever it is. And the fees they pay go back to the lenders in the form of interest. Uh, so yeah, that's all about uh, IQ Labs. And we're also doing collateralist renting of NFTs. So you can think of, um, you can think of like in-game content, being able to rent these uh, versions of the NFTs uh, in order to access whatever utility they have in a game or other application. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, so one common theme, I think, is between some of your projects is the, the notion of identity and, and its importance. And honestly, when, I, when I've used crypto protocols, I, I'm just using my you know, uh, address associated with my wallet to interact with these things. I don't. Yep. Um, necessarily think of that as my, my whole identity. So I'm curious, like, how do your projects kind of expand on that notion of like identity and including more data to be able to utilize in a lot of the dApps that we see today? So Chris, do you want to start? Yeah, um, <clears throat> it's, I think it's a great question. And, and there's this notion of identity that is kind of baked into blockchain today, which is my wallet is my identity. Why do I need anything beyond my wallet? I've got my private key. I've got my 24-word seed phrase. But I think the problem comes in when you try and do things where you need multiple wallets. And I think all of the guidance suggests when you're doing purchases, you should use a burner wallet, and then you should put it to your other wallet. And then what if you want to get an Ethereum NFT? Or what if you want to do something on Casper or Polkadot or whatever? Pretty soon you end up with 5, 10, 15 wallets, maybe more. And also the wallet doesn't actually express anything about your identity as a person, right? So there needs to be an abstraction layer above the wallet that basically rests, we think, on a DID or a decentralized identity standard that's also on chain. We think it's really important that identity live on chain in a fully decentralized way and that it's not sort of siloed away um, into a database, but it's actually readable on chain because it allows other dApps, other protocols to actually access that information. So the way we're thinking about it, Maddie, is we're taking this notion of identity and we're saying, yes, it's associated with a wallet, but there's a layer above that really can tie all of these wallets together. And by the way, you, you can have more than one identity. It doesn't mean you should have just one identity. You could have an identity that's very narrow and, you, and it's being used for NFTs, purchases, or it's being used for something you know, very specific. Or you could have a very robust identity that has multiple wallets associated with it that's more, more KYC, like you've gone through um, document provision, all that stuff. And the last thing I'll say is I think it's really important that it's reusable because this is one of the things we see in crypto where people get this fatigue, right? It's like, oh, my God, do I have to do KYC again? I have to go to another DEX. I have to go to another protocol. And it's like Groundhog Day every time you go do it. So I think there's a real advantage from an adoption point of view on the retail side to be able to pr provide identity and then on the institutional side we do KYB at Civic, and we also provide identity of an institution tied to a wallet. So this is going to crack open so many use cases, we think, for crypto. And on one chain, yes, but cross chain um, as well. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I totally agree with a lot of um, most of what Chris said. I, I love the, the use of decentralized identifiers, which we also make use of at Ceramic, uh, which is uh, technology from the W3C that's up and coming. And we see that your your Solana or Ethereum or any other blockchain address you have is not your identity, but it facilitates your identity. And the more of these keys that you attach to a common decentralized identifier, identifier it makes your identity stronger and less fragile. And DIDs are really needed to have more traditional security controls like key rotation or revocation, or even assigning access control rights to different pieces of data uh, that you want to read. Um, and I would also just warn everyone that viewing 
your financial data as your identity is a huge risk. Like telling everyone, here's my Solana account, and also this is me, bad idea. You want some uh, anti-fragility there. You need uh, higher level control like decentralized identifiers. No, I, I agree with a lot of what the, everyone's saying. It's um, sort of with Parsec going, just going off the identities there, is that Parsec sort of tries to bid, bridge the gap between Web3 and Web2. And I know like, we're trying to build identities on, on, on Web3. Um, but with Parsec, we like working with a lot of different projects. So whether that's like, um, I know Civic has some AML stuff. So being able to, A, detect uh, a transfer happening on chain in real time and being able to communicate with a different protocol that, hey, this deposit just happened. And being able to combine, for example, their, their risk data, um, we'd love to work with them on that, for example. Um, so yeah, I think cross-chain is super important. And, and we've been talking to some protocols as well that want to do some cross-chain stuff. So for example, <laughs> detect something happening on ETH in real time when a specific event happens and then send that data to sort of their Solana implementation on the other side as well. So I think this cross-chain data is, is going to be really important, whether that's to uh, monitor all these DEXs automatically to get data off of them for arbitrage opportunities, or just to like, build your cross-chain experience more, more seamlessly by um, detecting the data and then being able to um, send this data to like, an endpoint to automate code or whatever you want it to do. Great, and and what like so a, as you kind of like build out a more um, comprehensive identity system and and be able to surface that to 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 decentralized apps, like what what are the most exciting like use cases that you have seen unlocked through through this ability, um, yeah. and like or if you haven't seen them yet, what do you want to see um, built with this kind of primitive? Um, yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. So um, one of the things we're seeing at Civic is the advent of permission DeFi. And so I mentioned at the beginning, we're working with um, Solana and Solrise Dex Pro. Alameda is one of the big market makers coming into that Dex. And it's really interesting. Like, what is permissioned anyway in the context of a Dex? Well, basically, it means the counterparties can be known. So if you're trading with somebody on Coinbase, for example, you know they went through the Coinbase onboarding process, right? They had to provide their identity. They had to go do all this stuff, whether it's an individual or an institution. If you trade with somebody on Coinbase, you know who they are. We need to actually take that model and blow it out into the decentralized world, and that's where identity can really come into this. So what we've done with the permission pools um, on Solana with Solrise Dex Pro is to say, you're going to do a certain level of identity verification as a retail trader or as an institution. And once you do that, you get access to these pools of liquidity that are now available for you to trade inside this little ecosystem. Now, where it gets really interesting, I think, is when you take that and you blow it out across chains and you say, OK, I'm a yield-seeking investor. I want to go look for the highest yield, but I want to be able to do it cross product and cross chain. I don't want to have to care. Is it on Ethereum? Is it on Solana? Do I have the right KYC? Am I allowed to do it? I just want to be able to go use that product. So I think what we're building at Civic and these guys as well on you know, this middleware kind of enablement layer is to say, how do we get to that next level of adoption? How do we connect everything with these sort of abstracted identity elements and middleware pieces with notification that unlocks institutional money. Because the amount of money in DeFi, whatever it is, it goes between 150 to 200 billion, that is a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of money that wants to come in and can't yet. But pretty soon it will come in and that's gonna be a game changer. Yeah, one of the, the big things I see is the making your data more powerful by making it your own. And one of the examples I like to give is if you think about uh, all the streaming services you use, whether Netflix or Hulu or HBO, you all have preference data in all these separate services. And depending on how much you use them, they have different levels of accuracy. Um, and you often have to repeat much of the same behavior uh, across all, that, all those sites. But if uh, they had shared a common format or even had an interoperable format, you could own the preference data yourself and share that out uh, to any service you interact with. So I think we're seeing 
uh, transition from services competing on their user tables and uh, more on the quality of their services. And that's what something like Ceramic enables by giving you control of your identity and your data and not um, requiring you to re-enter it and recreate it everywhere you go. Totally. Yeah, no, with, with Parsec and IQ Labs, just going off with like uh, what we were just saying there with like those streaming services, a lot of screen streaming services, they, they require like you some personal identity, which shouldn't always be the case. There's going to be instances where you, where you need your identity, you're going to need KYC, AML, but there's also going to be those other instances more like a DEX where, where you don't need that so much. So um, yeah, what Parsec has built with, with IQ Labs is more like being able to, any decentralized application, be able to use their, their, their token um, more as like a decentralized SaaS subscription. That's, that's sort of how we use it at Parsec. No one necessarily needs to, we don't need to know their identity. We just, they can purchase our tokens or rent our tokens um, in order to access uh, our services as well. But again, there's going to be both use cases, both for the decentralized and more uh, KYC AML in order to bring that money um, into, the, uh, into the ecosystem as well. Great. Um, what, what do you guys think, we only have a few more minutes here, what do you guys think are the, still the biggest friction points when, going, when building like a cross-chain app? And what do, you, what do you think needs to get solved in the next you know, two years to make it completely you know, frictionless for an app to connect to all these different chains? Yeah, I mean, I, I think largely it's getting these connection points between chains to such a status that you can actually send messaging across notification services like Parsec, you know, identity layers like what Civic's doing, and then getting, I think, people to understand the power of having applications that can access cross-chain um, protocols, cross-chain DeFi pools, being able to bring your NFT you know, from point A to point B and represent it on any chain you want, whenever you want. Some of these consumer-driven use cases have a tendency to remove friction because creative projects see the potential and they have communities they want to serve and suddenly they're out there innovating and to the extent that we can be ready with these kind of middleware and identity layers to meet them where they are, I think things can just explode. I think in terms of friction, just because it's such a dynamic space, it makes it challenging to know which chain is ready for what at what time, but I think we'll get there. So what do you guys think? Yeah, I think there are many chains that are really interesting and have their own respective strengths, and to truly leverage the strengths of uh, different tools and technologies, we need strong uh, commonality. And that looks like really good data standards around uh, how we interoperate on data, whether it's schemas or signature types or key types, like uh, having a place to centralize or at least agree on how we can work together across these ecosystems will make our data more free and more powerful. And a lot of that work is happening in the W3C, Decentralized Identity Foundation, and other standards bodies. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is like, we see one of the trends happening right now. There's all these bridges that are being launched right now, and like cross-chain bridges is one of these big trends that is happening like at the moment. And you see like all these different competitors pop up. So I think that's really important for cross-chain um, to be able to ultimately get to the goal for the end user not to know what chain that they're interacting with. Obviously, we, we'd probably all love to, for it to be on Solana, but I think there's going to probably be different ecosystems, just like you have probably have your preferred brand. There's going to be people living in these different areas as well. So I think great UX, so you eventually don't know um, what chain you're interacting with, but also being able to um, have notifications, have data go cross-chain. Hey, this deposit got transferred. It's, it's now arrived in your other wallet or your, your wallet that you use across chain, um, and now it's ready for use, or just to um, notify that, uh, hey, this happened for your application, so you can do whatever you want to do. Great. Yeah. Um, and last question, we will have a few, few time here, but um, one of the things that's important is like creating like a shared set of standards. And so I just quickly, if you can just talk on how you think about your specific you know, DIDs or data layer becoming the standard and how you um, approach that. Yeah, I mean, we agree W3C DID standards um, should be adopted and should be implemented. There's been a ton of work that's gone into it. Um, I think it's an important foundational stone in identity. 
um, and it will foster greater adoption. Gabe? Yeah, uh, Ceramic is building out a, a data warehouse essentially where you can define any type of data schema and tools like that facilitated by these standards bodies is key. Yeah, and with, and with Parsec, like we're cross-chain solution and um, yeah, you can make it really easy to access that data across chain easily. But like with Parsec QL, we have the standard both for real-time data, but also in our historical data um, as well. So it's like a one-stop shop, um, and Parsec QL makes it really easy to access that data happening on chain. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Great insights. Thanks, Matty.